Hello, and welcome to lesson number two of our in-depth look at working with Nob Omniscope. In this lesson, we're gonna focus on the source viewer. At first glance, it's just a way to see what's going on with your video files, but there's so much more going on under the hood that you're definitely going to want to take notice. Now, to get ourselves rolling, I want to talk about the source viewer. So, to do that, we're going to call up a new video file. I'm just gonna select the one that I have on the desktop. I'm gonna say open and you'll see the video file starts playing back right away. Now, obviously, transport controls are important here, so we can decide what part of the shot we want to park on or play back from. Now, to call up the transport controls, we can simply right-click inside of the source viewer, navigate down to playback controls, and you'll now see that we can either click and drag, we can play, we can jump back to the beginning of the clip, pause, or loop that clip if we want to. Now, one thing that I do want to mention about Nob Omniscope, and that's just how much is going on under the hood. Features that are not turned on by default, but definitely ones that you are going to want to know about. And that's really what we're going to be talking about in this lesson. What's going on under the hood of Omniscope? And I want to start out by talking about masks. Now, at any time, what you can do inside of the source viewer is to click and drag to define an area that you would like to mask. Now. If you take a look across the scope, you'll notice that something's happening. It's a little bit more apparent inside the Y waveform directly below the source viewer, not so much in the vector scope. But you can see that we're actually highlighting a specific area of the actual shot itself. However, when I let go of the mouse, that mask disappears. So if you hold shift on both Mac and Windows and you now define that same area and you let go of the mouse, that mask will stay on the screen and it will stay on the screen whether you're parked on the shot, whether you're playing the shot, or even dragging back and forth to pick a new time to view this shot at. Now for me, I prefer the masked out area to be a little bit darker. I really want to remove all of this extraneous information here and only focus on the island specifically. So how do we go about doing this? Well, there's one of two ways. What we can do is navigate to connect, come down to video file and come to settings. Or what we can do is to simply navigate down to video file in the lower left hand corner. And I can click on that to call up the input settings. Now I'm going to draw your attention down towards the bottom of this display and you'll see that we have the drawing masks parameter where we can choose between a rectangle or an ellipse. We can also decide whether we want to reset quick mask when the mouse button is released or not. Or specifically for what we were talking about, we can get in and adjust the mask strength. Now one thing that I also want to draw your attention to and that is that at any time, what you can do if you don't want to use the drag bar, you can simply hold Control on Windows, Command on the Mac, and now instead of using the drag bar, you can get in and enter an absolute value. In this case, I'm going to enter a mask strength of 90%, and I can now close this. So now really, that is the only area that's being shown to me across the different displays. Now keep in mind at any time I can click anywhere inside the source viewer to remove that mask and get everything back to the way that we had it originally. All right, I wanna move on and talk about a few more settings before we jump in and talk about the data analyzer. First of all, let's right click on the source viewer and come down to our settings. A couple things that I wanna show you in here. First, you have the ability to use your monitor's ICC profile, which is very handy as well as being able to get in and choose a specific channel that you'll want to work with, including the ability to show just Luma values as well. Now, what I'm going to do is just to head back up, put this back to RGB, and we're going to head on over to our overlays. Obviously, title safe can be very important depending on your workflow as well as having the ability to define thirds, as well as having a crosshair up on the screen as well. Now, I wanna talk a little bit about the data analyzer. Data analyzer is a very cool feature inside of Nob Omniscope. What is the data analyzer? This analyzes the signal at the pixel level. Now, you're probably thinking, Kev, how is that even possible? Well, let me show you. What I'm gonna do is just right click, 
And I'm going to come down to the data analyzer. Now you're probably looking at this going, I, I don't even know what this means. What, what do all these numbers actually define? Well, the data analyzer doesn't help you at all until you actually say what area of the shot that you would actually like to analyze. Now everything looks kind of gray, it's kind of hard to figure out what's happening here, but you'll notice that as I actually move it across different areas of the shot, it's actually mimicking the shot inside the data analyzer. And if I take the data analyzer and I send it right up to the upper left hand corner, it's now a little bit easier to figure out what exactly is happening here. All right. Keep in mind that what this actually is representing is pixels. All right. So if I move this all the way over to, let's just say here, for example, what we're actually looking at is in this line, 1,004 pixels over by 533 pixels down. All right. And I can look at the actual values of exactly what is happening at any range or any area of the shot by simply moving the data analyzer anywhere that I would like it to go to. Now I'm just gonna close the data analyzer because another very cool feature and something that I always wish that I have in other applications is the ability to get in and define color pickers. So for example, let's say I wanted to know what the color value, the RGB value of the island right here is. I can hold Alt, on Windows, option on the Mac, and I can click right there. And now you'll see that not only is it gonna show me what the RGB value is of that specific pixel right there, this actually works when I hit play as well. So I can actually see a real-time update of the pixel information across the color picker as I actually play the clip in the source viewer. Now at any point, you have the ability to come in and hold Option or Alt and define many different color picked values. And what you can also do if you wanna remove them all is simply right click and come down and say, clear color pins. Or what you can do is with the mouse, simply use the middle mouse button to get in and remove the ones that you don't wanna see. And I also wanna draw your attention to the fact that as you're doing this, it's actually defining that specific area of the waveform if you take a look down here below as it goes. Very cool. Now I'm just going to right click and we are going to clear all the color pins. And I want to circle back around and talk about the aspect ratio so that I can talk about blanking detection. Now I'm going to be jumping a little bit ahead here and I'm going to show you a, sort of a brief preview of how Omniscope works inside of third party applications and I happen to be inside of DaVinci Resolve and again this doesn't really matter if you know DaVinci Resolve or not it's more so to show you the pipeline of how this is going to work and this is a typical scenario so I have an HD timeline 1920 by 1080 23976 and I've brought in some clips that are much larger than that 4k one is UHD different aspect ratios, uh, some are 16 by nine, some are scope. And this is a very common situation you could run into where you're resizing images. And what I've done here is I've very poorly resized these images. As you can see, I got a little bit of space down here at the top and bottom. You can see I got a little bit here, here and here, and a little bit over here on the top, bottom and left, but not so much on the right. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna launch Omniscope from DaVinci Resolve. And to do that, I'm just gonna jump over to the color module. I'm going to head into my timeline. And what I'm gonna do is just simply say open display. Now what's important to keep in mind is that for my workflow, I actually like to have Omniscope on a separate monitor, but for the purposes of recording this tutorial, we're just gonna switch back and forth between the different applications. So I'm simply gonna say open display. You'll notice that I'm brought to Nob Omniscope, basically to the launch window where I'm asked what I want to connect to. Now, because we are coming from Resolve, I'm simply going to say DaVinci Resolve. You'll notice that it populates with actually no signal coming through, and that's okay, because when I jump back into Resolve and I just click anywhere else, you'll now see that our image has now been populated and our pipeline is ready to go. However, you'll remember before I said that I wasn't exactly as precise as I needed to be for setting up my image scaling so that it fits the entire frame. So what I want to do right now is to define the pipeline that I want Omniscope to set everything to. And to do that, I'm going to navigate to connect. And you'll notice now that the, pref the preferences or the settings for that matter are now set to DaVinci Resolve as opposed to video file, which they were when we imported a video file directly. So I'm simply going to say settings. 
and I'm now going to navigate over here to where it says aspect ratio. Now I know that I'm working in a 16 by 9 aspect ratio, so that's going to be a 1.77 to 1 aspect ratio. You'll notice nothing really changed there. What I'm now going to do is to simply close that window, and this is where the aspect ratio and blanking detection really come hand in hand together. I need to know exactly what's happening with the blanking of this footage because if I head back to Resolve and I simply hit play here and I come back into Omniscope, you'll see that we can have everything playing through in real time. We'll cut to our eagle next. And this is, to be honest, why you really sort of need to have two displays if you're going to be working in this type of workflow because you can have Omniscope on one, Resolve on the other, and you'll be all set to go. Very nice. All right. So what I need to figure out is what is happening with my blanking, basically the space that I've left when I didn't scale my footage properly. So how do we go about figuring this out? Well, what I'm going to do is navigate up to QC and I'm going to come down to blanking detection. Now for right now, I'm not going to change any of these parameters. I'm going to leave the parameters the way that they are, basically top, bottom, left and right. And all I'm going to do is say, enable blanking detection and as soon as I do that you'll now see that I'm shown exactly what is essentially blank space in my image space that is not being filled up by the image so I can basically see where I've made a mistake in my scaling work now obviously depending on what you're doing you may want to be as tight or as loose as you need to be based on you know what you want the blanking to do so for example let's say I didn't really care about the bottom blanking what I have the ability to do is to simply ignore the bottom blanking like such by dragging it all the way down to zero now you'll notice that I can also start to bring it back a little bit here but you'll notice as soon as I get to 1% it immediately pops back on alright but you'll notice between 1 and 2% now it depends on the image here, but you'll notice that we get more or less, and let's just wait for it to switch back to our original image here. You'll notice at 1%, we have a little bit of red. There we go. And then at 2%, more red appears. So you'll see how we have the ability to get in and to be as precise or as loose as we need to be when it comes to the blanking detection. Blanking detection, especially if you're working with footage that is larger than the timeline that you're working with, is going to be imperative to your workflow to make sure that you've gotten in and positioned and scaled everything where they need to be so you don't have any edges that should be filled with video that are not. All right, that wraps up our look at the source viewer. In our next lesson, I want to talk about the waveform, the vector scope, and your targets.